I have never wanted a film to fail as much as I've wanted Toy Story 4 to fail. And it's for two simple reasons. For a sequel to fail, Pixar would finally have incentive to stop going back and making bad sequels. They could finally move on to newer projects and have incentive to never return and just do new stuff. And also, I think that Toy Story is a perfect trilogy. You have 10 out of 10s across the board, a perfect ending. The only way to actually build on top of that is to make yet another Toy Story that's a 10 out of 10 movie, which is by no means easy, and have another ending that's even more perfect than the one we saw in Toy Story 3. And they did it. I have never been so happy and frustrated to be wrong about a film before. And I'm not frustrated because I was wrong. I'm frustrated because I gave this film hate and it doesn't deserve it. The only thing that this film deserves is money and praise. Only two things. Everything else can just be swept aside because this film is out of this world. And the main thing that it needed to do was to prove its necessity. It needed to prove that it needed to be seen, that it needed to exist. And right after the prologue, which by the way is an essential part of the story, yeah it's the weakest out of the Toy Story franchise, but it's still great and essential, it does that. Like people said that they didn't see where this was going, first scene in Bonnie's room, I knew exactly what they were trying to do here. I knew that there was a vision, that they wanted to do something and say something poignant, not only about Woody, but also about the philosophy of Toy Story. Because over these past couple films, we've had a complex philosophy built up with the toys and the children and their relationship and self-worth. And this feels like the definitive deep dive into that philosophy. It feels like they've exhausted every major route that they could take. And they've done so in the most beautiful and impactful of ways. The most compelling part of the franchise, simply put, is the philosophy of it. The complex and dynamic relationship between the toy and the child. And to have that be the focus here, not just with one child, but with every child, is incredible. This was such a smart decision on the writer's part and makes it feel more all-encompassing than just Toy Story 3's focus on Woody's relationship with Andy. Every single theme built up from the first movie, whether that be loyalty, or friendship, or worth, or love, is expanded upon here. And the fact that they've expanded upon it after Toy Story 3 is a tremendous feat that must be commended. And Woody, Woody, this intense focus on that character is what does that. Because Toy Story 2 and 3, they're both more of ensemble films. And that's great, it worked for those films. But this one is so much more focused on Woody, and it works so, so well. This film has solidified Woody as one of my favorite movie protagonists of all time. Not only because we get to see his evolution from a selfish toy only concerned about his own love to a character, a toy, that will stop at nothing to make a child happy no matter his own worth and the worth that he feels, but we also get to see his emotional arc and his own philosophy on the relationship between toys and kids evolve and take it one step further. And surprisingly, a lot of this is actually done through Forky. Sure, Forky is a great comedic character, and hell, that's even more than I expected, but a lot of the most emotional moments in this film are done through his dialogue and the conversations he has with the characters. And that is just mind-boggling. It's incredible that you're going to be on the verge of crying over a fork, or spork rather, that thinks he's trash and will stop at nothing to return to trash. It's insane, and I think it's just such an expression of Pixar's ability to create an amazing cast of supporting characters. There isn't a single bad supporting character in this film, and you'd think that you'd miss the old supporting cast here, but you're dead wrong because every single supporting member is awesome. Giggle McDimples, Combat Carl, Duke Kaboom, oh my gosh, King and Peele's characters are hilarious. They are amazing in this film, even more funny, well not, I mean, I don't know, it's tough, but they're right up there with Mr. Potato Head in the amount of laughs they're about to get out of you. And their one sequence is easily the funniest out of the whole Toy Story franchise. It's the most I've laughed in the theater for a long time. And I think Toy Story 4 as a whole is the funniest of the bunch. And I think that that is once again such an accomplishment.
the film's just a total package, even in the visual and audio department. Randy Newman's score, holy shit, man. I mean, I love his, you know, his vocal work. It's great. There's a new song on here that you're all going to really enjoy. But his score, the amount of nostalgia, adventure, sadness, emotion that he's able to get out of his scores and express in them, it's insane. It's a miracle. And I'm so glad that we finally have a Toy Story that emphasizes it rather than hides it like the other films. They always have felt understated, but in this one, it actually feels like he has free reign here. And the visuals, man, I watched Spider-Verse the other day. I'm like, I'm going to be so disappointed in Toy Story 4's visuals. Hell no. Not only is there an insane amount of detail here, but it feels like it's every single element and animator at Pixar firing on all cylinders. This is like the ultimate answer to Spider-Verse in terms of its visuals. There's such beautiful imagery here. It's mind-blowing what they can do, especially since the other Toy Story films were not necessar necessarily meant for this. I mean, yeah, we have some iconic images, but they're just iconic. They're not necessarily beautiful. Forget that here, man. There are some breathtaking images here. And of course, you get that with Rainy Noon's score. <sighs> And if I'm talking about Randy Newman's score and how it feels so adventurous, better talk about some action. And the action's banger too, man. Such clarity in all of these scenes. There's a heightened sense of peril because you care about all of the characters. It's all great here. And while there's not a specific sequence that stands up to the final ones in any of the previous Toy Story films, the final one in this movie is particularly mature because the action... The very tension is in the character's decisions. And because every decision feels so important, it makes up for all the action that you would have had otherwise. It's such a mature decision to do that. And I think it's one that totally paid off in my personal favorite climax of the quadrilogy for that exact reason. That it gets rid of the action to just focus on making these characters have their final decisions built around their philosophies. Not a single element is out of place here. Gabby Gabby, best villain in the franchise, not even close. Best motivation by a mile. And what they do with her, well, I can't say it here. It's definitely expected, but it's built up so well. And the moments later in the film are once again so impactful on you, it doesn't matter. It's so deserved and earned that it simply does not matter. And speaking of deserved and earned, Bo Peep, my gosh. They take this one-dimensional character that you still love and turn her into something completely different, and it's fine. It still feels earned here, which is a huge, huge step for movies considering that we have stuff like The Last Jedi where Luke's jump is completely undeserved, where it feels so unnatural, but everything they do with Bo Peep here, I thought that she was going to be, you know, typical, annoying, Ray character, blah, 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 Psst. So wrong. Could not even be more wrong. She's such a deep character in this film that actually has respect for her male counterparts while still being strong herself. And that's exactly what a strong female character should be. Let just a good female character. And they still have the relationship, the ro not just a friendly relationship, they still have the romantic relationship between her and Woody built up over the film to depths far beyond, far beyond the trilogy, and they still have her strong. So if you want to do it right, do it like this film. Hell, if you want to do anything right, just look at this film, because <laughs> not much wrong with it. The one small, stupid, insignificant thing, nitpick that I would bring up with this film, early on in the film, Buzz is like a natural born leader, right? But he's like, pressing like one of his buttons to like listen to his inner voice to like tell him what to do but honestly it's such a small stupid insignificant nitpick that's not even worth mentioning it's not even worth subtracting from the score of this film when this film does so so many things right i mean this is what a film should be it'll have you laughing hysterically crying like a child it has such complex themes and philosophies behind it every single character feels complex and more than just a stupid piece of paper like almost every single animated film out there these days this is an animated film for kids that functions so well for adults, specifically adults and older people who love the Toy Story franchise and what they've done with it in the past. 
that also has one of the best supporting cast I've ever seen, especially incredible since all of them are built up in this film. It has some of the best character work for a main protagonist ever. It has one of my favorite relationships in any film I've ever seen. It is a full package. And I know that you might think that I'm being hyperbolic here, but I love this film that much. Forget film of the year. This is this makes Joe and Anthony Russo look like a bunch of fourth graders playing with their toys. That's that's what Endgame is now. It's a bunch of fourth graders playing with their toys. That is how stupid that this film makes Avengers Endgame look. This is what Avengers Endgame wishes it could be. It's such a satisfying and beautiful finale to this franchise that if you don't like it, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say because this is my favorite animated film, not just of the decade, but of the past 15 years. And you can bet your ass when I make my best films of the decade, this one is vying for that top spot. Toy Story 4 is an easy, easy 10 out of 10 that you must see. A must see for everyone. And if you don't see it, you're just missing out on one of the greatest cinematic experiences of your life. That's all for Lightspeed Brothers today. Good night and have a good one.